hello and welcome to another vlog um i've been quiet on booktube i'm sure no one has noticed that i haven't posted in however many months consistently at least you know my one or two videos a month notwithstanding and i thought i'm gonna do better in august i'm gonna make an effort to at the very very least vlog every day in august like just start on the first and just like even if it's just like a 10 second here i am updating that I haven't read anything because I'm tired from work. I'm going to do something. Um, today is August 7th, so that's going well. Um, it is what it is at this point, but <laughs> I am finally vlogging. It's just when I get off work, I'm normally just like hot and tired and want to come home. And that's normally the ideal time for me to vlog because when I go into work, it's usually dark because I work at like 5 a.m. or midnight most of the time. I don't know. My work schedule is weird, but I just, it's easy to not vlog, and I'm trying to, like, start building up my booktube habits again, like, ever so, ever so slowly. Um, oh, there's the Mimi. Uh, I have no idea if this angle is good or weird, or I assume it's bad, but <laughs> this is, this is what we have right now. Um, reading-wise, I actually have been reading a little bit lately, um, just because, I did realize that like I was really missing nonfiction because I've been reading a lot of YA recently and I love YA, don't get me wrong, like YA is wonderful. <laughs> I will always love YA but a lot of my audiobooks have been YA just because they're rereads for me and I've been reading ebooks a fair amount lately like at work and again those are mostly YA for me because I like to get through something sort of fast on an ebook and I just have been reading a lot of YA the past like five months. And I was craving nonfiction, so I did pick up a couple of nonfiction books. Um, the first I actually have already finished. I finished it in like two days, and that is Educated by Tara Westover, which is a, a memoir of a young woman who was raised by extremist Mormon Mormon um, fundamentalists. I, I don't know what the exact term, terminology is, but they were very abusive parents um, to whatever degree. And she was homeschooled in that she never received any sort of education. And she wound up getting into BYU, like studying for the ACT on her own, getting into BYU and sort of like realizing that there's a whole world out there and that everything her parents told her and everything her father said about like the government and other people and everything just like wasn't necessarily true. And it was very interesting. I gave it four stars. Like, I don't know that it would be like a life-changing kind of book for me, but it, it was a really solid memoir and I, I just, I really like memoirs, so I really like this. <laughs> um, and I also started re listening to a new audiobook because I was listening to Tamar Pierce on audiobook, um, just because I like to listen to series because when I go through them it's like easy just to find another audiobook because most of my audiobooks are rereads. Um, but the next one in the series wasn't available and I had like five hours at work with nothing to listen to. So I just kind of found a random nonfiction book because nonfiction is also kind of okay sometimes for me to listen to via audiobook. So I started listening- oh now I'm gonna forget what it's called. I started listening to, I believe it's called Real Queer America by Samantha Somebody. Um, I'll insert over here of course. <laughs> um, but she's a trans journalist and basically this book is her taking a road trip across America, across the red states, the conservative states who voted for Trump in America, and finding like the LGBT plus oases there, basically. Um, just like these towns that have like thriving LGBT plus communities. And it's, I, I was kind of unsure going in just because of the road trip aspect, and I don't like road trip aspects in books very much. I find them just like annoying in general but it's so far it's really really interesting and really well done and she just like it's a very positive book and I think it's wonderfully positive like it's very realistic it's very down to earth it's very like this is the situation but it's also like there are many positive aspects in this situation and there's enough unhappiness in the world that like we need to also like shine a light on positive things and it is I'm not gonna say it's like all about transgender um, people, rights, whatever, but because the author is transgender, she does obviously focus on that kind of a little bit more than, like, the other LGB+, plus. <laughs> but it, it's, it is very interesting, and, like, it, it's really good so far, and honestly, like, I'm not super far in, like, maybe a third of the way into it, but, like, I, I would highly recommend that one. I think it's fascinating, and I am 
that would be like the two things that I read slash am currently like focusing on a lot. I just, I love that audiobook. Like it's so fascinating. Um, I'm also supposed to be reading The Last Wish by An Andre Sapkowski. I forgot his name. Um, I did read like the first two, one or two um, short stories in it and like I really dislike it. I think it's really bad. But like, or not bad, just like so, no, I think it's really bad. Um, <laughs> but I've heard it gets better and I'm just like gonna try a couple, like slog through this, slog through the next one, read at least the first novel and then make up my mind, but I don't, like, I, I'm not very far in, so, like, I definitely need to give it more of a chance, but, like, yeah, I don't know, I'm just, this is slow going, because I just, it's short stories, so it's easy to just, like, not pick it up, because it's like, oh, I, like, finished that, that's done, so, like, I'm not in the middle of it, you know, technically, and, yeah, I don't know, I'm not a fan, but, like, I do want to give it, like, a solid try, and then the final thing that I haven't actually started, but, is gonna be like my next physical read because let's be real I'm not reading the Witcher book anytime remotely soon. Um, A Wolf at the Table by Augustin Burroughs. This is non-fiction a memoir I believe about his abusive father. I know nothing about this book. I picked it up free from a used bookstore. They have like a free bin outside for all the books that they don't like buy from people that like if you don't want to like take your book home or take it elsewhere you can just dump it in the free bin so that people coming by can just like take it for free <laughs> and i was like oh it's non-fiction it's a memoir sounds interesting and i know nothing about it i know nothing about him he did write at least one book that's like very popular because when i worked in the bookstore it was called like toy on trouble it was on like one of her promo shelves for the longest time and i have no idea what that one was about because i never looked at it but i don't know i just I'm craving kind of like dark, depressing nonfiction because like Educated was kind of just like, it was dramatic, you know, but like dramatic in the sense that like very many negative things happen, it had a positive outcome-ish kind of, I don't know, but it was just like, it, it, there's a lot of serious topics in it, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm craving nonfiction about like serious topics, like I have David Starris nonfiction, I thought about that, but I was like, eh, a little bit like lighthearted for my mood right now because everything's still kind of stressful so like I'm reading this which is apparently about like his father's horrific abuse because I read like half of the first page and he's already like oh my father's gonna slit my throat that's literally the first line if my father caught me he would cut my neck so I'm like okay that's what this is about but hopefully it's good um yeah that's basically what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to read what I'm working on reading and hopefully from here on out, I can keep up with the vlog a little bit better. So it is August 8th, um, second day in a row. Good job me. <laughs> I have actually started A Wolf at the Table now and I don't know, I don't love it. I'm not very far in. Um, I don't have a bookmark, but you can see I'm like that far in. I just, it's very disjointed and it's very like, here are my memories. Here's my memory of from when I was a year and a half old and it's this very specific memory that's very detailed, very descriptive, all these people, and it's like, mm, how much do I really believe this versus this is something he kind of made up when he was younger and it kind of stayed with him? I don't know. I would say, like, the rude way of saying that is I think he's lying, and, like, probably the more honest way is that I think he's convinced himself of something that is true that isn't necessarily true. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's a weird book. Um, I actually did Google him a little bit, and like he seems like a weird person, um, which is not necessarily bad. I'm a weird person, so like, no judgment. But I'm not a huge fan, and I don't think I'm really gonna like this book, which is disappointing. But I'm still gonna read it, and we'll see what happens. Um, so far, it's been like about his father, but like kind of, it talks around the issue of his father, and I feel like he's getting to the point where like his father's gonna be horrifically abusive, and we're gonna deal with that, and like. We haven't dealt with it yet, and it's kind of annoying that he's, like, building it up so much because I'd rather he just talk about things, but I don't know. That seems to be his writing style, is just talking around a lot of things and, like, not actually hitting the point, but, um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm just gonna keep reading this. And I'm still reading Real Queer America by Samantha... Oh god, I knew her last name, like, a minute ago. I don't remember her last name, but like, I'm very nearly done with that. That's real good. Um, this is whatever, but like, that's real good. And I would, I would highly recommend that book. Um, just, 
even if you're not American. I don't think you have to be American because I think it kind of holds true. It's it's definitely American centric, but I think it, it's worthwhile even if you're not. But it's just like it's such a good book. So today is technically August 10th, but it's like four something in the morning. I'm heading into work. So um, I'm counting this for yesterday because I forgot to vlog yesterday. Yesterday was just like a weirdly long day and I worked late and I don't know. I went to see my parents and was at my friends until the morning and I just, I wasn't at home much yesterday, so I didn't vlog. Um, this is just kind of replacing that and I'll vlog later today because I don't want to miss something and it was yesterday, like four hours ago, so I'm counting that. Um, I did finish Real Queer America by Samantha Allen. Finally remembered her name. Um, really good, four stars. Like, that's definitely going to make my honorable mentions for the year. It was just, like, a well-done book, and it was a lot more memoir than I was expecting it to be going in. Like, I wasn't... It, she, it was described as, like, a road trip type book, and... Um, I thought it was going to be much more like road trip and she's going to like random places and instead it was more like she was going to places from her past and like people she'd known and like where she went to college and where she grew up and like in various red states and it was very interesting like and I'm not saying anything bad about that it just really wasn't what I was expecting going in but I did I did really enjoy it and I, I just think it was a really good book overall so I, I definitely would highly recommend that and I pretty much haven't read anything else, but I did pick up some books from my parents' house because I'm not really allowed in anymore because of COVID and, like, I work in a grocery store, so I'm high risk. So, like, they pulled some books out of my room for me that I wanted, like, The Color Purple by Alice Walker and, like, The Tomorrow series and some of my law books and I forget what else, The Vampire Academy series. So, I now have those in my apartment, um, so I can read them <laughs> whenever I want. Don't know that I will anytime soon, except for except for the color purple, because I'm kind of doing a Spielberg marathon, like, every movie he directed, like, from the beginning, and I'm near approaching the color purple, so I, I need to read that one soon, but beyond that, and kind of just, like, it, things that I thought I might want to have in, like, the not-too-distant future, or that at least I would like to have the option to read, even if I don't wind up reading them, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Today is the 13th, um, not doing great with keeping up, but you know, I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying, which is better than nothing. I finished A Wolf at the Table. That's what this is called. I'm trying to read it backwards, which like, um, I did finish this. I don't, I didn't really like it. I didn't think it was interesting. I think maybe because this isn't like his first memoir. It's not like his main memoir even. It just seemed like it was kind of like meandering and pointless and it was about like his father's abuse but also like it didn't seem like he really had a whole lot of interest in his father as a person which made the book since it was like about his father it made the book seem a little bit pointless I don't know I wasn't a big fan um two stars but I did finish it and this will probably be going in the unhaul pile whenever I like I probably won't film a review for it because I haven't filmed reviews in months, but <laughs> whenever I eventually do my wrap up of the last however many months, this goes in the unhaul pile. Um, and I'm reading, oh, it's far away. I'm about to start The Color Purple by Alice Walker because I'm going to watch the movie at some point. Um, so yeah, this is what I will be reading tonight. Um, the audiobook I'm currently listening to is Bloodhound by Tamora Pierce. So I'm kind of just like gonna finish up that series and listen to the Alana series um but I do miss real queer America so like I might try to find more nonfiction like that that's like kind of like issue focused like it's about like like real queer America was about LGBT plus rights but it also wasn't like a super difficult read like it wasn't super in-depth it was just kind of like a, a memoir basically. It was kind of on the lighter end, although it was discussing a serious topic. It didn't go super in-depth and like because my reading comprehension is lower for audiobooks, it was kind of perfect for that. So I might try to look for more books like that to listen to an audiobook because I did really really enjoy that experience. Today is the 14th and I called out sick from work so I wasn't feeling great at like four o'clock this morning when I had to get up. So I kind of just spent all of today reading and just like chilling and trying to feel better um and I did wind up finishing the color purple which was really good like I mean I know this is I don't know if I'd define it as a classic because it was from the 80s but like 
a modern classic, I guess. One of those books that was just like instantly revered as amazing and like 40 years later is still discussed the same way. But I don't know, like it was really, it was really good. Like I was kind of just compelled to read it all day long. And it's, oh, what's her name? I forget her, Celie. Celie's a really great character. Um, and I didn't realize it was told in epistolary format. It's like all letters that Celie has written like to God that are kind of like journal entries, just like her life, because she has no one else to reach out to. And it's, it's just really, really interesting and just like so well done. And I, I really did love it. Um, so that I finished. It's good that I'm like reading some books from my shelves now. <laughs> and um, the next thing I wanted to read is David Sedaris actually, because like I read The Color Purple and like you all know what that book's about. It's like there's a lot of rape, there's a lot of like abuse, there's a lot of like negative bad things that happen in it. and there are happy things as well. Um, but it is very dark and I read that Augustine Burroughs book. Um, I don't remember what it's called and that was very dark just like all about his father's abuse and I read Educated which was also kind of rough so I was like David Sedaris like I kind of still want some nonfiction, but I'd like something that's got a little bit of lightness to it like it doesn't have to be like super cute and fluffy because Sedaris is definitely like real like he writes real things but very like humorous so um the one David Sedaris book I own that I haven't read yet is I think there might be more um Dress Your Family in Corduroy and Denim. I read one or two of his other books and I just really enjoyed them. They're like solid four stars for me. Like I'm not, he's not really a laugh out loud writer, which is kind of why I do really like his books because they're not like hysterically funny. They're just like very amusing and entertainingly amusing. So I am, I am pretty excited to get into this. I've been reading, meaning to read more of him for, for quite a while now. I should at some point probably go back to vlogging in my car because then the lighting was actually semi-decent. But um, yeah, this is what we got for now. I finished the David Sedaris book. Oh, what day is it today? Um, today is the 18th. I missed a couple days again. Oops. Um, finished the David Sedaris book. It was okay. It wasn't great. Um, the essays were a lot shorter than in the last book I read of his which was When You Are Engulfed in Flames. I think that was the title. Um, it was along those lines anyway. And that one I really enjoyed. And it felt like it was a lot more in-depth and the essays were a lot more purposeful. And reading this was just kind of like, it was good, it was fine, like it's three stars, he's a good writer. But it was just like, it seemed like it kind of lacked purpose. Like he would tell like this five page story and it's like, it'd get to the end and it was like, okay, like what was the point of that kind of? Like what did that accomplish? Like. I don't feel like reading that story has improved me in any way or like and I don't mean like learning a lesson from it or anything but it's just like when you read something that's really interesting and you're like oh that's fascinating like oh that was like worthwhile it's like I never felt worthwhile after any of these essays and like I don't know it's fine he's still like a good writer and I'm still gonna read him I just think maybe this book isn't his best but yeah I, I finished it anyway and I am looking forward to reading more from him because I've read some of his other essays just like randomly and he has some good stuff just like maybe this wasn't my favorite and then I am moving on to The Girls by Emma Klein which I picked up ages ago I don't even remember when like two or three years because it was really popular on booktube and like I just remember it sounded so fascinating and then I saw it like a nice hardback copy in like a thrift store for like a dollar and I was like Oh, I must have and I was very excited to pick it up and very excited to read it and I just never did because I'm me but I'm reading it now and honestly I'm only like a little bit in have I even started the first chapter technically no um but I read like the first 25 pages and I don't love it so far but I don't know um we'll see we'll see how it gets like once I'm actually into it I know a lot of people really love it but I also know that bookworm have did not <laughs> and I was like that was a little bit concerning because I heard that after I picked it up but I am I am hoping to enjoy it. I finished Bloodhound by Tamara Pierce. Today's the 20th I believe. I finished Bloodhound by Tamara Pierce the other night when I was working my overnight shift and I honestly think I enjoyed that book more listening to the audiobook than I did reading the physical copy because reading the physical copy it felt overly long and just kind of dry and like it went on forever whereas listening to the audiobook it was still like 
the same thing. Like, it's definitely the same story. It's very procedural. And it does move... That's the second book in the series. And that book moves away from a lot of, like, kind of the standard characters, I guess. Like, it, like the main character, Becca Cooper, grows up in this city. In this specific part of the city, she has, like, her friends. She has her co-workers. She has the things that are familiar to her. And the second book kind of takes her away from all of that, except for one person. And everything else is gone. Like, even her cat is gone. <laughs> like, and it does feel very different. And because it's a cop book, like, you know, a high fantasy cop book, still a cop book, it's, it's very procedural. It's kind of dry. And I just don't get into it as much as I really want to. It just, it seems like it's too much focused on the cop story and not enough focused on like this high fantasy world and like the drama that's going on in like the world as a whole um but i i'm torn between three and four stars because i do feel like the physical book for me is a solid three stars it's like not great but enjoyable enough whereas the first book was four stars i think it's really great um but i don't know just listening to the audiobook made it easier to get through kind of and it did make it more enjoyable and I think it was just because, like, I didn't have to sit down and, like, focus on that and nothing else. I could, like, listen to it while I was doing work things. And it would be, like, take my mind off of it just, like, the tiniest amount so that I wasn't quite so consumed with, like, how long it was or how kind of a little bit boring it was or how it seemed a little bit repetitive or it took too long to get to the point. It was just, like, I was focused on other things just a little bit and I liked it more. Um, but... Yeah, I'll think on that one a little more before I decide to rate it because I do feel like changing my rating from the audiobook when I'm not sure my rating would change for the physical book. I don't know. I'm torn on that. Um, I am making progress on The Girls by Emma Klein. I am decently into this now, like over 100 pages. I'm in just starting part two. Still don't love it. It's, <laughs> it's not bad. I don't dislike it, I don't think. Maybe I do. I'm not sure. I'm just bored. Like, I can't get into the writing style at all and the storytelling. And it's like, it's about this cult. Like, she's falling in with this cult. I should be fascinated. But I'm not. I'm just kind of disinterested. And her writing style just seems like so unnecessarily wordy. And she describes things in a really weird way. And I don't love it. And I don't know. Maybe it'll click at some point And I'll be like, oh wait, I'm into this story. Because I, I would like to be like, this book sounded like my jam. Like, I was so excited to read this. And it's just like reading it, I'm like, eh. Um, but we'll see. I will finish it. Like, it's not like I'm going to DNF it. It's not terrible. It's just like right now, it's like sitting between two or three stars. And like, if I don't love the actual plot, it might be falling down to like a two. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. But that's pretty much what I've been up to. I think I'm gonna go ahead ooh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here just because I do think this vlog is getting kind of long because I have been kind of consistently updating it which is good I think today is the 21st um so that's like two weeks of like consistently updating even if not like every day <laughs> like I was trying to but it's it's still consistent which counts um I did finish the girls by Emma Klein finished that this afternoon. I had today off so I was just kind of chilling here all day and reading and hanging out with Mimi who's very lazy. Um, I finished this. I didn't like it. I never liked her writing style. She like overwrites everything and she doesn't, she can't just use simple words. Like she won't just sit down and like use a simple word or a simple phrase. Everything's got to be like overwritten and roundabout and like it's like I, I shouldn't have to like think that hard. She's like the dog's <sighs> Uh, the coat of blacker than black I don't know I can't think of any examples because they're all just like it's just weirdly written but yeah I just I didn't like her writing style and the story itself was just boring because you know from the beginning that the main character wasn't involved in the murders and the climax is kind of like the murders happening and the main character not being involved and it's just like we knew that like we knew that from the beginning like that's not a spoiler the main character from the beginning is like yeah i wasn't involved in the murders just like the cult kind of but like you never really get a good picture of the cult and you never really get a good picture of what's going on and it's just this kid being like stressed and i found it not at all interesting um and i do like slow boring character driven stuff like normally it's just i didn't find this book at all interesting but whatever um haven't decided if that's two or three stars I don't know if I care about it enough to make it two stars, but then if I don't care about it that much, I'm not sure it deserves to be three stars. 
who knows. Um, the next thing I'm going to read that I actually just decided on because I've been sitting here for hours not knowing what to read. I'm going to read I'd Know You Anywhere by Laura Littman, which is just terrible looking on here because it's like, it's so shiny and horrible. And <laughs> I have heard nothing but bad things about this book. Cat from Bruising Reviews read this um, under a different title. It was published under a different title somewhere at some point, I think. I'm like 99% sure. And she has a whole like rant video on it. She does rant videos sometimes. And I haven't watched it yet because I knew I had this and I knew I wanted to read it. And it's a thriller so like if everything gets spoiled for you in a thriller it, it can be a little bit difficult to read it. Um, but I've heard it's absolutely terrible. So why am I reading this now when I'm kind of craving a good book? I don't know. But at least I know this one probably won't surprise me because it's probably going to be terrible. And you will probably have to wait for my update on this in my next vlog because again I'm probably going to end this here. Um, but this will be my next read. I've been reading a lot lately. I'm very pleased with that. I've been updating my vlog. I've not been watching YouTube, booktube, or making booktube videos or really doing much of anything in that area, but I have been reading. So that's that's progress and that's what we're going with right now that like I am making progress. So um, yeah, that, 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 that's gonna be it for this vlog. Thanks for watching. If you watched, if I edited this, if this goes up at any point, I'm not really sure. But I will see y'all another video in possibly next month. <laughs>